All right, next. I will go ahead and start. I'm just gonna start from this side and start working my way this way. So I've got some uh, power resistors. Uh, where are they? Oh, here they are. So we have the four uh, 1.5K resistors. And the good thing about Slucky's layout, if you guys have seen the image, is that he's actually got them drawn with the right colored output already for me. Uh, the other resistors I'm gonna use are in the power line. And those are distinctly different as well. So this one's a, like a, I, I know the red is two, so that's two, two, like 22K or 2.2K or whatever. Same with this. So you get you get better at looking at these, but I also almost always will take the time to carefully get my uh, ohm meter and test to make sure that I'm not making an obvious boo-boo. Uh, and so I think some people um, possibly think this is slow, but I'm not in a hurry. I'm doing this because I like doing it. So I want to make sure I do it right. So. Uh, I've got, there's three of those two ranged ones, but here are my four that are for the 1.5K. So what I want to do is put my, put it on ohm range and validate really quickly. Now I don't have to validate every single one, I just want, so it's a hundred and, oh, I'm not getting good connection. This makes me want to revert to the schematic because I thought there was a, like 1.5K, but this is reading 125. So let me just double check on another one. But as long as you measure them and they all have the same banding and you can see that clearly, that's generally also a safe bet that you're in the right range. And because I'm in these power resistors, I only have a total of about seven or eight of them anyway. So it's 150. Let me double check the schematic. Maybe I'm just remembering wrong. Oh, so they are, they're 100 ohm resistors. And so these, those are within tolerance because they're 10% resistors. Um, and then, so those are the four 100 watt resistors. The in, inbound ones are the 1.5K, but those can be lower wattage. It's these, these output ones that will be drawing a decent amount of current to go to the, out to the, so the in power comes in here. This is the voltage drops that come down to the screens. Uh, the red ones output go to the screens and then the main power goes straight to the, directly to them without any dropping. So that gives you a, a voltage difference between the screens and the, and the anodes, but all right, so they're only 100 ohms, and those are the right ones. So we're good to go. I'll go back to my layout. Anytime you're curious that you might be doing something that you're not supposed to, it never hurts to double check. That's about the best thing I can tell you as a uh, as is a, a good technique to being careful about that. All right, so what I want to do is figure out how wide this is. And I think it might be at the widest setting, so I'm going to try that. So we just put in my resistor here, and bend the lead, bend the lead. And the good thing is that this also lines it up pretty well in the middle, and we'll just try that out and see how that looks. Sure enough, dead on. So that um, that little trick that I had found out from, from Hoffman Amps was well worth its weight in gold, was getting these guys. So. All right. so I will just line all four of these guys up, get them straightened out first, and then fold them at that longest setting. So on this one, again, because I have the through hole part from the under wire part, I am gonna, I guess I'm gonna have to, even though I've now cut that end, I'm gonna have to fold it out a little and carefully wrap it around, but it's still gonna be connected, so it won't matter. And then once I solder this up, it'll be the same. You can kind of see though, the sad part about that is that means that this one is gonna look ever so slightly different now because I had to kind of fold it, but all in all, it's not horrible. All right, next I have another cap. This one is, let me zoom in on that, 50 mic at 100 volts, and that's probably gonna be this bigger one. Well, it's 47. It may be that that's the only size that he pretty much carries. The rest of these look like the smaller ones, so yeah, this is the right one. The rest of those, the ones that are down for the preamp phases are all 25. All three of them are 25, yes. Okay, so this is the, the right one. Now, I may be lucky here. I have some of these wider ones. This may fit in that. I'm not sure. Oh, it's a very close fit, but it's not an exact fit. 
Um, but this one is going for a longer stretch, and I don't think that I have one that big anyway. So, all right, so I'm going to want this to line up in the middle here. What I will do is try and use this as a little bit of a nice corner. All right. Put that in there. And then, again, I've done it so that you should be able to hopefully easily read the capacitance on these guys. So here is one of those situations where I, this is definitely, I would love some input from people. I bent it, it's, it's lined up, but the wires have just this slight kick to them. And so they tend to look a bit funny. I think that means I probably need to bend them just a little tighter. So let me flatten that and scoot just a hair more. I'll try again. Anybody has ideas about how to bend these cleaner, let me know. Um, but that still looks a little off. Try and there we go. Oh, actually, that might that might help right there. All right, making headway. All right, so we've got that done. Now I need to put a couple of resistors here, and those are brown, green, red, and they're standard sized ones. And there's actually oh, those are those. There's four of those, and they are the. Um, Those are what goes off to the tubes as well. Okay. And again, I have my schematic, so I'm gonna to swap to that. Those are my 1.5K, that looks like. And I have my chart, it's not in front of me right now, but let me grab that and bring it over here, that'll actually help me. So if I go back to the 30-4, that drawing says that they are brown, red, I'm sorry, brown, green, red. So brown is one, green is five, and red is going to be 100 ohms. So you times 100 times 15, and you get 1500, which is 1.5K. So I just have to find the 1.5K. I need four of those, because there are gonna be two here and two here. And I'll go ahead and just find all four of those and go from there. This is them. So 1.5K is used on 12AX7s all the time for the bias. It's kind of, I've seen it range between 1.5K uh, up to about, what, 2.2K. And I've also seen it go down about 820 ohms. That seems to be pretty standard range of the three kind of bias values. Now, that is only if you, I, I believe that will only be standard if you have a 100K resistor on the anode to bias them. 1.5 tends to be a very good balanced point. 820, if I recall, will be a little bit more drive, and then the 2.2K tends to cool it down and make it a little bit more clean headroom, so. All right, so we've got, I'm gonna put four of them here. Again, like I said, I always double check, but these should be my 1.5K resistors. So I will double check. Yep, 1.5K, all right. So I'm, what I'm gonna do probably is I'm just gonna check out all the spots that I have 1.5K since I have them out and I'll just put them on, so. Uh, but I have these four, and they again, I'm going to want to figure out the size. This, uh, actually, let's go for this one because I think this is about, oh, well, that's, I'm trying to find the one that's kind of the size of these guys. There's various different sizes here. I think this is probably the best fit. It's a little loose, but that's fine. And then I need to figure out for these sized ones, what size do I need? 30 is a perfect fit. All right. So. In this case, I'm going to turn that around. I like to stay consistent, so I'm going to put the... Um, oh, no, I did have that right. I want to have, because I'm kind of like in my brain, I want things to be consistent. I'm going to have, in this case, since the gold band is up here, that's the, the tolerance level, and the top band is the first one, I'm going to do the same here. Um, technically, this is kind of up, upside down the, from the way I do it a lot of the time anyway, because a lot of time when I'm doing these, I have it set so that the... Um, grounding bus down here is more towards me and everything's based on that but this time I'm just kind of reversing it but that's okay it's just more for me it's the consistency that I'm trying to shoot for and 
Now that I'm looking, again, this is why you want to be careful. These are not 1.5K. I just got two in a row. These are, so it was a little bit of a mix of two different kinds. These ones look like they are 2.2K. So I want to separate these. These are 2.2K. I'll be using those a little later, but that was definitely the wrong one. So I have to look. You have to watch what you're doing. Be cautious. There's a green one right there, and there's a green one. So let's double check. Now I'm going to be a little bit more careful about this. Yeah, 1.5K. All right. So I just want to look for that little bit of a green band. If you've got one that's known and you can compare them and they look identical, then you're in good shape. So I've got my other two here. All right, there's those. Next, I'm going to do these. Um, there's some little ones that go here and here. Uh, those are brown, black, yellow. So they'll be 1, 0, 10 times 10K it would be, I think that's 100K. So let's look for some 100K resistors. All right. And if you recall, I did have to wind it again because I've got a jumper wire that runs up. So the way that works is we've got our B plus that will come in here, lines up for all of these and they head down, but then it also has a jumper that jumps from there down to here, which then sends another reduced drop 22K to either half of these power tubes. So that's 100K to each one, but then those split and jump to the other tube as well. So they hit all four of them. Um, and so that section is now complete, but let's look up above it resistor wise. I've got two more up there that are two reds. So 22 and then a yellow, which is four. Or, oh no, the, the yellow would be 10 K. So 22 times 10 K is that 220. Does that sound right? So What I could do is take a minute now and get my caps in here. I've got a 0 .0047 and then a couple of 0.01s. I think these are, these are the big bad boys of the 0.01. This is 0 0.0047 mic. I think my cap reading on this guy won't go that low, but we'll see. This one's a bit weird. Yeah, it just says six nanofarad. Uh, but I think I've got my other one here that actually reads better range. Cheapy one, but it's better than nothing. So, oh, and you know what I haven't done yet? I'm gonna stop here. 
this is 5.6 nano. I don't want to put any of these caps in yet because I just realized I still haven't done my one thing that I always do, which is to measure the caps for outer foil. So for now, I will leave the caps out and we'll measure them for outer foil a little bit later. The ones that are sided, you can obviously do, but the ones that aren't, you are not able to kind of pull that off. So for now, we'll leave our caps alone. All right, before I end for the day, as you can see now, I've got, I finished up that one. I finally found the one I was looking for. I've done a few more. This one, as you can see as well, I put the resistor on the bottom and then the, the uh, uh, electrolytic capacitor on top. If you put the cap on top, it's easier to remove. And those are the things that do fail just over time. Other caps or other resistors or the, the, uh, the other types of polypropylene caps and whatnot don't necessarily fail over time. But these ones always do, so they're, it's best to have them the most accessible so it's easy to replace them if, you know, 10, 20 years down the line they start going bad, you can replace them. There you have it. That's this, where we'll stop for today, and I'll come back again and continue showing more of this off. Um, I'm not sure how interested people will be in seeing this level of detail and me talking through it all, but hopefully uh, I'll get some feedback on that. We'll see. In the future builds, I might continue doing this deep level of chatting while I do it so people can kind of see what's going on. And uh, it also is good for me. Hopefully people will chime in and tell me ways that I could make what I'm doing a little bit better. So... Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you next time.